Senator Vargas. Chairman Stinner, members of the Appropriations Committee. The committee have been proud to be part of for six years. Uh, my name is Tony Vargas, T-O-N-Y-V-A-R-G-A-S. I represent District 7. It's the communities of downtown and South Omaha. I'm here today to introduce LB 961, a bill that would appropriate $4 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds for significant equipment and technology upgrades at NSITE, the National Counterterrorism Innovation Technology and Education Center based at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Now, I want to start this afternoon by telling you two UNO stories. The first is about UNO itself, namely the students. Now, just over a third of this year's freshman class is Pell Grant eligible. I was also a Pell Grant student which means they're from low to moderate income families, the families most likely to experience the greatest disruptions from the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, almost four in 10 UNO freshmen are non-white. Almost five in 10 are first in their families to go to college, better known as first-generation college students. If we know that low-income and minority students come from the communities, and we know this, the communities hardest hit by the virus, at UNO, they are poised to get a foothold on the ladder to success. <clears throat> Now, here's the other story I want to tell you about UNO. It's about a UNO business professor who used her PhD in something called industrial organization or IO psychology, a domain normally used in HR consulting for companies. This individual became an internationally recognized expert in terrorist groups, specifically Salafi jihadist groups, better known as ISIS. UNO professor Gina Lingen has combed through captured battlefield cell phone data from ISIS members to help counter their activities. But she's not just an expert in this field. She's a visionary for UNO who in 2020 convinced the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to award UNO its 10-year Home for Counterterrorism research. And she recruited eight new research faculty from around the country to join our state in the fight against terrorism. This research consortium she's built called NSITE is the counterterrorism research hub, the R&D arm for the Department of Homeland Security. This puts UNO and Nebraska on the national map in ways that help our state attract outside talent and expand our workforce development efforts. Now, in a few short years, NSITE is helping the brain gain by making sure they're providing internships, training, and certifications, not just to help out our law enforcement friends at Homeland Security, but everyone from a banker in Omaha working to implement the Know Your Customer laws to the Scotts Bluffs County Sheriff Department who is charged with keeping our large swath of our state safe. Now, Dr. Ligon will testify after Chancellor Joanne Lee, and they'll tell you a little bit more about Insight and what they do and why LB 961 can be so impactful. Now, with less than three years old, Insight is poised to impact Nebraska in many ways, including the following. It's going to become a draw not just for students who might never have considered a career in homeland security or in network vulnerability industries, and not just for research faculty who see unique opportunities here. Insight's poised to make our institutions safer and more resilient to viruses. This is going to address some of our brain drain. It's going to be a brain game. Insight's developing technological innovations like suspicious activity reporting chatbot that can improve our community response and prevent tragic outbreaks and violence. I don't have to tell our rural friends who have broadband service hampers response time and that poor broadband. Insight is aware and can work on this. This is going to address our technology gap. Our state economy is rooted in agriculture, which frankly could benefit from Insight's work in helping protect our critical infrastructure from attack. This is going to help our ag industry. Nebraska's businesses can benefit from NSITE trained workforce that can increase industry resilience and security. This is going to help our businesses. By the way, NSITE's research isn't being conducted in some underground bunker. It is public by design. NSITE is trying to build community resilience by demystifying subjects of counterterrorism, opening itself to the community, and blunting the mainstreaming of extremism, which we have seen across, this, across the globe. This is for the public. Nebraska has a chance to seed the work of UNO by funding the kind of cutting edge technology that NSITE can use for research, for recruitment, and developing the national security workforce of the future through LB 961 right here in Nebraska 
and at UNO. The Center's vision to have a larger headquarters to become the premier academic resource for counterterrorism and targeted violence studies. Picture UNO and the Omaha area as the place where federal agencies send their workers for more training, where students gladly come from a unique opportunity to become part of the antidote for extremist violence. Nebraska can be a place leading the U.S. from the center, helping pull people from the extremes to reduce violence, build resilience, and create a more stable future. That can happen here with this appropriation. With that, I ask you to support LB 961, and there'll be people testifying to answer some more specific questions about some of these <coughs> addressed um, improvements that are also included in that one pager and detailed there, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. Good to see you again. Good to see you, Senator. So good afternoon, Senator Stinner and members of the Appropriations Committee. My name is Joanne Lee, J-O-A-N-N-E-L-I, and I proudly serve as the Chancellor for the University of Nebraska at Omaha. I want to thank each of you for taking time today to hear our system proposal for the use of APA funds. It is my hope that by the end of our time together today, two things will happen. First, I want you to be as inspired as I am by UNO's mission to serve as our state's engine for workforce development. Second, I want you to understand how strategic investment in UNO's national security, STEM education, and human mobility programs will give Nebraska a competitive edge in educating, retaining, and attracting the talent we need to drive our state forward, improve our quality of life. As an international student whose parents fled communist China amid a national conflict, I want to stress that feeling safe and secure is foundational to our ability to learn, teach, and grow as people. I'm immensely proud to say that UNO's National Counterterrorism Innovation, Technology, and Educational Center, also known as INSIGHT, plays a vital role in our nations to make that possible. Insight is a U.S. Department of Homeland Security, DHS Center of Excellence, and is a national leader in understanding, preventing, and counteracting terrorist violence. Its commitment to Americans is translate research into tours for frontline homeland security professionals and help build a workforce pipeline to a wide array of career fields. With a strategic investment of $4 million, we can meet the technology needs that our team of experts it requires to understand emerging threats as our national security officials can counteract them and keep us all safe. Because of UNO's standing as our state's only public urban university, we are compelled to share our knowledge with our community. Through this investment, there will be ample opportunities for researchers, students, community partners, and children to experience the insight model of real-world STEM education and collaboration. If the last two years have taught us anything, the difference between economies that thrive and those that struggle to survive is an agile workforce equipped with skills in science, technology, engineering, and math. That is what UNO STEM Trail Center does every day from our campus. The center supports our students faculty and our community through engaging programming, training, reskilling, outreach, and entrepreneurial ventures. The STEM Trail Center's purpose is to ensure that a STEM education is accessible to everyone at any age or any stage of life in order to fill our state's most pressing workforce needs. To expand the center's impact, accelerate its valuable work, and build stronger pipelines to employers UNO requests $5 million to establish a headquarter that everyone in our committee can experience. Today I have shared with you existing projects that will continue to be immensely valuable to our state's workforce development and to our nation's counterterrorism work. I want to stress that we're not living long, healthy lives filled with motion and activity. We cannot fully enjoy the benefits of our work in each of our, these areas. Our Division of Biomechanics and Research Development and our School of Health and Kinesiology 
already nationally recognized leaders in understanding and improving human mobility. If you were to visit our campus and explore our health and human science facilities, you will see our inspiring research in gait rehabilitation for prevention, low cost 3T printing of prosthetics, elderly physical function, and so much more. You will also see dedicated faculty developing the next generation of public health, health research, kinesiology, athletic training, and sports medicine professional. But we owe it to ourselves and future generation to think bigger. We need to lead the world if we truly want to improve our quality of life. With an investment of $6 million, we can purchase equipment for cardiovascular device manufacturing, soft tissue imaging and analysis. Not only will these technology give us a greater understanding of human tissue, but the knowledge we produce through device testing will also build strong partnership between our state and medical device industry. An additional $10 million investment will allow us to repurpose 22,000 square feet of existing space on our <coughs> campus to create a better environment for health and kinesiology teaching, learning, and research. I understand what my university system colleagues and I are asking you to consider is not an insignificant amount of money. Our state is facing generational challenges that are worthy of support as well. These strategic one-time investment opportunities I have shared with you will position the state of Nebraska to compete in the economy of the future. With your support, we're excited for our people, our future, the community of Omaha, and the state of Nebraska. With that, I want to thank you for your time and welcome any comments and questions. Very good. Questions? Ching Yang, thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, distinguished members of the Appropriations Committee. My name is Gina Ligon, G-I-N-A-L-I-G-O-N, -I and I'm the Director of Insight. I'm appearing today on behalf of the University of Nebraska system in support of LB 961. I'd like to take you back to when I was a sophomore in Weatherford, Oklahoma. It's um, a little bit smaller than Kearney, but also off I-40 in western Oklahoma, far away from the city, which is what we called OKC. Um, I was uh, sitting in a history class when I learned that Tim McVeigh had killed 168 Oklahomans that looked a lot like us in this room, people who were doing the business of government and people who were supposed to be safe from terrorism. April 19, 1995 has brought me here today to you. It's also shaped my whole career. And I'm here to ask you for resources to train the next generation of workers to help us keep, to help us keep Americans safe from the terrorism that I experienced as an impressionable teenager. Let me give you a brief example of how your investment will have a return on investment for all of our safety. In 2013, I had just won a grant from the state of Nebraska. I used it to purchase tech, to study groups like the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, and I trained students all over UNO's campus to study them as well. In our analysis, the students identified this new terrorist group, but this one had more money, it had more technology, and it had these shiny white Toyota pickup trucks that it drove to all the meetings. It was enough for me to pick up the phone and call a trusted leader in the Pentagon. I remember that call like it was yesterday. But the months that followed were a blur. And that's because the group that the students had found turned out to be ISIS. That's right, students in Omaha at UNO were the first academic center to identify the terrorist group of ISIS. I'm here today to tell you that those students wouldn't have been able to do this, and we wouldn't have been able to become the center of excellence for Department of Homeland Security without that initial investment from the state of Nebraska. The bottom line is your investment allowed the federal government to see promise in Omaha as the center for terrorism research outside of the Beltway where all the other centers seem to exist. 
It's important that Insight exists in the Midwest for at least three reasons. First, technology developed to combat terrorism needs to be situated in places that share the same demographic characteristics and technology constraints that places like Nebraska have. For example, as you heard from Senator Vargas, we're working closely with the Sarpy County Law Enforcement to develop a chatbot that will be able to, to work in Scotts Bluff just as well as it can work in Papillion, Nebraska. Second, we want to be seen as the academic partner for every job in the middle of the country that's charged with keeping Americans safe. We want to be a resource for the anti-money laundering professionals in our banks from First National Bank in Omaha all the way to the ones in Scotts Bluff where Senator Sinner seems to know very well. We also want to work with ag operators to protect our nation's food supply. The center that the bills that you heard earlier today, our center will also collaborate with and support. Finally, we want to inspire the future workforce through training that's hands-on, meaningful, and interdisciplinary. Academia siloed, weaving digital and STEM skills focused on national security of our communities, our neighbors, is the key to sustainability of our workforce and also the future of higher ed. We have to inspire our students with meaningful problems to make them stay in our state. And I'm eager to hear, for you to hear from one of Nebraska's best next. In closing, I'm asking you to invest in this idea that's bigger than all of us. Invest in a hub for security innovation right here in our state. Like I said to Homeland Security when I was fighting against University of Maryland to win the center, Omaha is not in the middle of nowhere, it's in the middle of everywhere. Amen. The Oklahoma City bombing occurred during my sophomore year. Nearly 30 years later, here I am, the mother of a sophomore and an eighth grader. They're going to be embarrassed I said this, but they're right behind me. <laughs> Wave, Kate and Henry. Um, and they're sitting in this government building with us today. Your support for our legislative bill is not only for our university, but it's also for Nebraskans like Kate and Henry Ligon who deserve to know that we are investing in their safety. Thank you so much. Open for questions. Thank you. Questions? I always thought it was COZED was the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, <coughs> distinguished members of the Appropriations Panel. My name is Lauren O'Malley, L-A-U-R-E-N-O apostrophe capital M, A-L-L-E-Y. I'm an MBA student at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. I'm appearing today on behalf of the University of Nebraska system in support of LB 961. You know those memories that even years later you still think about? Doesn't matter how long it's been. I'd like to tell you about three of mine. First, 16 years ago, I remember visiting this very building as a fourth grade student from Omaha's Black Elk Elementary. Second, I'm a senior at Millard West High School, finding out I got a full ride scholarship from UNL, which was funny because I swore I would go to college as far away from Omaha as possible. <laughs> but once I got that letter from UNL, I realized I could get more opportunity if I stayed than if I went to college somewhere else. The third memory is a conversation I had with Dr. Gina Ligon two years ago. I got my undergraduate degree from UNO with four business concentrations, finance, investment science and portfolio management, banking and financial markets, and marketing. I had just graduated and I wasn't sure what to do next. I knew I wanted to get an MBA, but I thought I needed to leave Omaha to find the challenging opportunity that I craved. That day, Dr. Ligon asked me to be part of a terrorism research center, now known as Insight. My first reaction was, what? I'm a business student. I study finance. What would someone like me bring to terrorism research? That day, she challenged me to use my degree in a different way by looking at how terrorists finance themselves. Now, I'll be frank, you have to take a lot of finance classes to get three finance majors. But 
but I can assure you that out of all those finance classes, terrorism came up zero times. Who thinks that way? Who thinks about terrorism when you're thinking about finance? Insight does. I've seen this firsthand in the brilliant people that I get to work with and the products I've helped produce, like a guide for researchers to measure the return on investment of their projects. Now, a few weeks ago, I was interviewing with a Nebraska company for a job once I graduate in May. And while talking about my time at Insight, one of the executives asked, who thinks of terrorism when they think about finance? And my first thought was, how could you not? Don't worry, I didn't say that out loud. But that's when I remembered my first conversation with Dr. Ligon, where I had the exact same question. It was then I realized just how much I've grown and just how unique the mindset at Insight truly is. See, when most people think about the price of Bitcoin, they're not making the connections between cryptocurrency and terrorism. Insight does. And when you read about the metaverse, people aren't talking about how terrorists could use it to recruit people from all over the world. Insight does. And ever since that moment as a student at Millard West, I knew I wanted to be part of something bigger, but I wanted all of this without having to give up the good life that I live here in Nebraska. I admit that I, like many of my talented peers, have thought that career advancing opportunities were only found if you leave Nebraska. But thanks to Insight, I got the opportunity of a lifetime to work in counterterrorism as a business student alongside the best researchers in the world, and luckily for me, only 20 minutes away from home cooked meals at my parents' house. Now I know you've listened to many people tell you why their organization deserves a share of these federal ARPA dollars. As someone with a degree in investing, I empathize with you because I'm sure these decisions are tough. As a future business leader, I can say that investing in Insight is a sound investment decision. It will impact both the state and local economy by creating jobs and bringing in high caliber talent to Nebraska. It will incentivize local talent like MBA students at UNO, to plant roots here by providing world-class opportunities for education and employment. And it will create valuable resources for law enforcement, government officials, and even businesses to keep communities safe. Now, I believe today will also be one of those moments I'll remember for years to come, hopefully for a good reason. And I feel now more than ever prepared for my next step in the world because of Insight and because of the investment you now made in me. And I'll leave you with this. Investing in Insight is investing in the future of Nebraska and people like me who were born here, grew up here, and want to stay here. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Senator Dorn. Thank, you, thank you for being here and thank you for staying in Nebraska. I guess I, until your last comment and you finally talked about finance or investing and all of that, the whole rest of the time was uh, on NCTCR or whatever. Uh, how much of your degree do you use in that part of that research or that part of that funding? Thank you, Senator, for your question. I would say all of it. There's um, something that's really unique about Insight is they look at terrorist organizations like a business. So I thought being a business student, I wouldn't have anything to add to the conversation of terrorism, but actually there are a lot of similarities and that's thanks to the incredible work from Dr. Ligon and, and the rest of the Insight team. Well, you, you, this, you kind of missed out on a golden opportunity to talk to this committee about finance. No, thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right now, we need a lot of help. We need help. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. I am looking for a job. So. Any, <laughs> any additional questions? I think you got quite a fan club back there. They're all beaming right now. So. Thank, thank you. Thank you. For testimony. Any additional proponents? Any opponents? Anyone in the neutral capacity? Would you like to close, Senator?
Chairman Stinner, members of the Appropriations Committee, um, I just want to thank you. Um, I think there's, there's not a lot I can add, uh, but I do want to thank Chancellor Lee, Dr. Ligon, Lauren O'Malley, and this is a space that we don't often talk about or hear about. I think we also forget that we are a hub. We're a leader. We've been recognized by the Department of Homeland Security. And as you've heard, return on investment, this is a return on investment on being a leader from here on in. This is about investing in a workforce that truly doesn't exist largely outside of a state like ours. We're creating homegrown individuals that, and what you just heard is a finance individual with an MBA utilizing their skills and expertise to be proactive about getting ahead of future terrorism. That's happening in Omaha. That's happening in our state. This can cement us as a leader across the country. I think this is what we should be looking at, which is also what are we going to do that's thinking about the future in sectors and workforce that others are not spending the time to invest in? That's what this is about. I urge you to support this. I think it is a fantastic idea, and especially when you look at the price tag, we can't find that many better investments in a space where we don't often do something in. I want to thank the people that testified, and I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to the stories. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes our hearing on LB 961. We, excuse me, we had 11 uh, letters of support for LB 961, and so that concludes our hearing on 961. We'll now open with LB 962. Senator Vargas. Back to back. <laughs> Major. Chairman Stitter and members of the Appropriations Committee, my name is Tony Vargas, T-O-N-Y-V-A-R-G-A-S. I represent District 7, including the communities of downtown and South Omaha. I am here today to introduce LB 962, a bill that would appropriate $5 million in the American Rescue Plan Act funds for facility and laboratory upgrades at the University of Nebraska at Omaha STEM Trail Center. Now first, um, some background on the UNO STEM Trail Center. The center offers family programming, welcoming all ages to STEM. Community engagement efforts, reskilling opportunities through customized professional development opportunities. The center is working hand in hand with community partners to reduce the number of unfilled STEM jobs while simultaneously improving the quality of life for many Nebraskans through economic